All right, I'm back. It's been a long time. I don't know how long. Too bad. Um, I got new parts. Let's see, I got these awesome valve covers from the boys. I guess that one's upside down. That one. Brangers Racing. What is? It? Oh, it's flipped. That's what it is. All right. Uh. I don't think I can turn it around. I might get that in another clip. Hold on just a second. I got these big dogs. Billet valve covers. Brain is racing. Super nice. Red anodized to go with the fuel rail. Which you'll see here in a bit because I'm going to be putting it on today. Dope. Alright, so right now, though, I'm just test fitting those to see how the holes line up. Right now, though, I am uh, about to put on the uh, little flange, flange studs that I got from Speed Factory Racing. They're really nice. They're titanium, like a burnt titanium type deal. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get that. I don't know if that's in the shot or not. Yeah, it's those. They're dope. I didn't really... Titanium wasn't really the option. I was thinking about going with uh, like it wasn't you know something I planned out but they were there and I don't think it's really a wear item so I got them. you know why not so yeah these valve covers are super nice really big uh, I think it's like dash 12 breathers on them um, it's got three one there one there one there um, fit up super nice, really low profile, so you get a lower, uh, lower hood, or better hood clearance. Um, I took the cams out, because I still need to torque the head, I'll do that later on today. I don't know if I'll get that on video or not, I might, I might not. It's not really that crazy of a deal, it's just going up to 80 foot-pounds in three different steps. Um, and I just got a torque wrench to gear wrench like 83570, whatever the part number is. I really don't know. But that's what it is right there. Kind of did some digging. That was one of the better ones, so I got it. And what else did I get? I got a few other ARP goodies. Got a crank bolt. I got shortened ARP um, what is it flywheel bolts because the two other sets I got were too long I got one set that was too long I tried to get another one that was shorter that was too long because it was the same length as the other one it was just advertised differently it fooled me and those are machine shorter so hopefully those will work um, so I'm going to try and get a good angle here to Show me putting in the, the flange studs on this side real quick so I can get a good shot of that. A lot of what I got was aesthetics, which I knew I had to do a little bit with for this engine because, you know, it's a 2JZ. It's got to be something dope, you know. So, got these bad boys. I don't know if you can really see what they look like. They are sick. Like it's got a little bit of purple in it, in the right angle. Awesome artistic looking things. Focus. There we go. So sick. Paid way too much for them, but I don't care. They're awesome. Find the threads, you dingus. Need to find out what size Allen keys are. So 
So let us see. Quality content right here, man. Only the best. Walking out of shot. All right. This may or may not be a good idea to put oil on, but it is aluminum and titanium, so Different metals bolted together can act strangely. Learned that from working on my dirt bike. It's not broken. Alright. Oh, that's much better. It's tight fit though. High tolerance, golly. Yeah, you can't really see that. Oh well, I'm professional. It's weird, it gets like looser the more they get in there. for an Instagram picture because I need to post more on there but and I really want to see what this burnt titanium would look like it looks so good I really can't see that. Okay. <laughs> Come on, move you closer. To where? I have no clue. So you may be wondering, gosh, what have you been up to all this time? I've been working. I work at Ruger now, which is wild. I don't think I was the last video I uploaded. Um, so yeah, I work there. I make uh, devices that provide rapid onset lead poisoning. Um, very dangerous, but they are devices that do so. I get discounts. Which is nice. <clears throat> so that's cool. So yeah, I'm getting up at like three in the morning to go to work every day. Which that that really blows. That sucks. Cause I'm in bed at like 
seven. Seven to eight. And uh, melatonin is my favorite drug. <clears throat> and it works very well. Got a couple, a couple of those uh, rapid onset lead poisoning devices because of all this crazy stuff that's happening here in America. And uh, yeah, pretty wild. I went and hung out with my brother yesterday. I'm shooting around. It's now January 31st. Time of recording, which this might be uploaded sometime today or later. Man, there's about 30 leaks in this roof. It'll be alright. It'll be fine. seem to have extra parts, which I don't think is right. It works for the GTE motor, which might be right. Uh, or could be for up here, there, there, and there. I don't think it is. I don't know what those are for. I'm not going to use them. <clears throat> it might be just like spares or something. I have no clue. But I'm definitely going to hold to those. Keep them safe. such a weird material. It literally feels like the density of plastic, but it's a metal. It's wild. The only other time I've really dealt with titanium was in college. And it was I think it was something that had to do with the brakes on the Acme Special autocross car that was worked on. I think. Not exactly sure though. It felt super weird. Man, these parts are nice. Golly. The tolerances are very nice on these. extra studs and washers. I don't know what that's for then. Maybe the GTE exhaust flange is a little bit different and they just have it um, set up for both. Not sure. I'm not complaining though because if one of these nuts or washers seems to bounce off whenever I take off the uh, exhaust flange if I ever do. I'll have extra, which is nice. 
Oh, that is so good. See, they did have the raw titanium, which was just like a silver color. And they had the burnt, and I was like, I gotta go with the burnt. It's so dope. I think on the other side, I am gonna use a, uh, just do a, a dry thread in, because these. He's gonna have to have red Loctite on him. Now just spray out the uh, oil later when I go to put Loctite on him. Cause I don't really need to now. I'm just doing a mock-up, checking to see how everything fits. Um, and if, if there's any issues with anything. Oh, I got a transmission on order. Uh, it's a Liberty LSC 5 speed. I ordered that like a month ago, month and a half ago. And that'll be here in April. So expect a video in April or a little bit later in April. Depending on when it gets here. And it's LSC 5100 5 speed manual. H pattern, it's a dog box with um, symmetrical dog engagement so that uh, I'll be able to downshift because they do make like tapered ones which if you have any idea what a dog box is um, it's like these just five lugs that kind of look like just rectangles around a ring and when they engage, it's like a really solid engagement. It's not like a synchro where you gotta kind of get everything going the same speed with a little brass synchronizer. Um, these are like hardened forged steel um, face plates on there. Oh, and the face plates are removable. That's a big deal. That's really nice. So when I tear them up. Uh, probably first gear will get torn up the most, first and second. So when I tear them up, I can just take them off and replace them for like 100 bucks, which is not bad. I don't have to take the whole, uh, I don't have to replace the whole dog gear, which I've seen other designs and I don't really like those designs as much. Because it's, it's you get a lot of stress razors um, from the dogs engaging on the, like, in the same structure as the gear versus a faceplate design where the faceplate slides on the gear with a spline and all that force travels through the spline a lot more evenly. So that's why I like the removable faceplates. Uh, they're just a lot more, they make a lot more sense logically to me. So time to do the other side. I'll do a big reveal shot in a minute. Then I'll go to Lowe's and get a half inch to three eighths drive because see it last time. I don't want my phone to get ripped on. Nope, that's does that automatically flip upside down? Interesting. Didn't know it did that. I had my phone charging because taking videos will kill my phone battery. I got it! How's about How's about there? It's really close to being dripped on by one of the 30 holes in the roof, but it's fine. It's fine. Alright. 
these. These are the ones for the intake. You can read that if you're uh, dyslexic. I'm just gonna put these in dry so I don't have to spray the roll out later. Putting oil on that side was probably not the best idea. Not a big deal though. But the rain sounds nice, so you can hear that. It's North Carolina, so it rains literally every day and doesn't stop ever. I hate it. Exhaust were a bit tight, which is probably a good thing. Um, but that's why I put oil on because I didn't want to tear up the aluminum inside. Oh, so close. Almost two for two. Hey. Got. This is like the small detail stuff you don't see on other YouTube channels. It's actually like installing a part. That's something that I typically like to see on YouTube channels. The actual installation, because that's like more realistic. A lot of other people, they just, you know, Throw it on there. And I'm like, hey, update this, that, and the other. Which I'm slightly guilty of. Because some of the stuff I didn't really know how to film uh, in any sort of interesting or quality manner. 
because I don't do this normally. I actually think hearing my own voice on camera sounds super weird, I guess. That's something I've got to get used to or will get used to. But baby steps, just like anything else. Not really worried about the quality right now. But once the car gets running and rolling, that's when I really start to crank videos out, ramp it up. Just kind of showing like a bit more of the technical side of uh, car stuff like boost control and whatnot. Because the way I'm going to do my boost control is like really, uh, really unique compared to the way other people do boost control. So it'll be either a lot more complicated with very little gains or it'll be slightly more complicated and have very big gains in precision and reliability and all that stuff. Recording. It is. There it is. I kind of hope the YouTube thing does blow up a little bit though. Does that make monetization a bit better and uh, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to get connected with a lot of the other big guys out there like uh, Cletus and Adam and all the other East Coast guys. It'd be cool to meet those guys for sure because there are a couple of role models I definitely looked up to. Um, that I learned a lot from. And Cletus, man, he's crazy. But he's done such a, such a good thing for the car community. He's showing it like in such a, such a good light with like very little drama, very transparent with what he's doing um, and why he does it. Which is good because a lot of other YouTube channels are like nothing but drama and, you know, it's very strange, so. Two 
Who's that? Probably a very boring video, similar to my other one where I was just rambling on for like an hour. But that was just kind of recording plans so I can remember remember the plans later. Oh yeah, the boost control. Okay, so that very uncommon. What I'm trying to do. It's all electronic based, there's no vacuum lines um, for actuation, there's vacuum lines for sensor, because um, you kind of need those, and uh, shoot, oh, I lost a nut. So yeah, boost control is a bit different because you have your wastegate that controls your turbine speed and your boost pressure normally. And you have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an electronic throttle body on my charge pipe to control just boost pressure. So then I can have the Electronic wastegate by Turbo Smart, like the EWG 60 or something, have that control the turbine speed, and that'll you know go through my intercooler and all that. And then I'll have the electronic wastegate as like a controlled boost leak to bleed off boost pressure, even though my turbo is spinning at higher RPM, making boost pressure and whatnot um, before my intercooler or yeah, before that control boost leak, whatever. So then I can control boost pressure and turbo RPM independently because normally they're dependent on each other. So then that could allow for really fast launch control and really accurate launch control because I can control the turbo RPM and boost pressure differently. So I can have like a really high turbo RPM uh, for launch control but have that you know waste or uh, have the electronic throttle body fully open bleeding off all the boost pressure or whatever boost pressure I want to leave at and then when that closes I'll then be leaving at that turbo RPM and have a really solid uh, launch out of that and the same thing applies for uh, a rolling launch control as well so that's cool and I need to think about how that would affect like bypass sort of anti-lag where you're trying to keep your turbo spinning as you're slowing down so maybe I could close off my wastegate and have all the air going through the turbo and then vent that off as I'm slowing down to keep the turbo spinning more I don't know that might work, that might not, because when I'm slowing down the engine might not be moving as much air to keep the turbo spinning, but I might try and put in like a richer and um, back off the timing, uh, richer fuel mixture and back off the timing a bit uh, to, you know, throw some pops and bangs in there to, to keep the turbo spinning a little bit. but. That's that's pretty far later on since my cylinder head isn't even torqued down yet. So I'm gonna go grab my intake and throw that on real quick. Maybe, yeah, I'm gonna throw that on real quick. See what that looks like. Put that together. 
and that'll be in a separate video, but the same day.